grandfather, Elmer Blake, gave to me. I'll, uh, I'll share this with you. <laughs> Team Geldings, four and six. One gray, one black is coal. Team Roan Mare is age five and six. One comes with a foal. Smooth mouth gelding saddle horse, Bay Mare and Bay Roan Cole, the sampling of the horses Elmer Blake listed to be sold. 38 head of stock and all listed in detail. As I am moving to Oregon, I will sell at public sale. Calves, yearlings, steers, and heifers, a registered Hereford bull, a dozen good milk cows, two fresh, another to soon pull. Farm machinery, household goods, chickens in their feed, everything a family might ever want or need. Well, half past noon, notice said that sale get underway, and it even noted lunch on site by Louis Cafe. 2,500 bushels or more of oats, barley, and corn. 16 dozen pullets and hens, Plymouth Rock and White Leghorn. 100 ton of barley hay, red fodder and sorghum cane. The back there, black amber is the name they gave that grain. Sulky, plow, lister, harrow, disc, binder. In-gate cedar, 12-foot rake, a side hitch, sweep, and grinder. Plus other machinery listed used to work the land. Horse drawn gear, every piece means grandpa was a hand. New three burner oil stove, the table from the kitchen with six chairs plus the high chair they used to put my mom in. Rocker, range, radio, dresser, sink, beds, dishes, milk pails, churn, everything you'd think. Well, even on that list for sale was grandpa's livestock brand. Now there's something I'd love to have seen or better have in hand. I'd keep it with the arrowheads he gathered on their land, left there by the Ponca, the Pawnee, and a Sulacota band. Speaking of keepsakes and heirlooms from the day, I've got Grandpa's fiddle and bow, but I never heard him play. What I have heard is a treasure that'll never go away. Stories of my heritage and roots, what paved our family's way. Mom telling a prairie rattler sunning on the path and huddling in the cellar while tornadoes leveled wrath. The hard work of farming and keeping up with chores and a month of Sundays sometimes between trips to the stores. See, my roots are dug from Nebraska soil up north by the Dakota line. It's where my mom and aunt and uncles were born and raised until the time. Grandpa decided to sell the farm and move the brood out west, take a shipyard job because the war was on. And for that, I am blessed. Because how else would my mom have ever met my dad, fell in love, married, and had the son they had? I am truly blessed that Grandpa sold the spread and replanted our roots in Oregon, where we would grow instead. Oh, Cindy wants me to tell you what I already mentioned, which is the book is for sale here. So, yeah. <laughs> and they're available on my website too, OregonCowboyPoet.com, which is where my CDs are as well. So I mentioned a, a, another poem, a brand new poem, you know, I have a, I do have an appreciation for history, and you know, when we are blessed to have history like that farm auction ad, the things that my grandfather owned, it, uh, it's, it's a real, real blessing. And uh, you know, sometimes when we don't have history, when, a, when an organization like this doesn't exist or isn't able to, maybe do some of the things that they would like to do, maybe because they need some additional money. That's why we're here. Then, they, then those, the history. There's gaps and there's there's some missing pieces and whatever. And I, I imagine you've had the experience I have certainly been places and seen things and you kind of wonder. I've been places, believe me. I've been, Carl and I have been horseback in the up towards the Steens and come across old stone fences long abandoned or old pieces of farm implements or or a chimney out in the middle of nowhere or or my. The one that really gets me thinking is when you come to an old barn, you'd be driving. Sometimes it's from the highway. You can drive through Eastern Oregon. You can look out and you look on a far, far canyon or down in a draw and you see some barn half tipped over and, and just wonder, what was that all about? Where'd they go? So with that in mind, uh, here, here comes a new one. We have wandered into wonderful this weathered barn that barely stands, decades since last occupied, except by dust light strands. There is history in the rafters and old stories behind each nail. What I would give to hear one time the intimate detail of those who call this place a home 
the generations passing through, what brought them here, what lives they lived, sort fables from the true. Did they build so those who followed were better off than when they came, or were their aims simply selfish, concerned with their own fame? Were children raised to flourish, bound to, inspired to follow their own muse, or hindered, bound to flounder, held back by narrow views? Did generations follow footsteps set in stone, or were they free to forge new paths for places then unknown? For me, I choose to think the best about those folks who left this land, how I hope that their departure not hastily unplanned, that prospects for something better had them set out for their dreams and leave behind this tangle of tilting walls and beams. The truth, of course, long buried deep in dust and splitting grain, floors sagging to the elements and gravitation strain. There's no one here to tell the tale, and I can't read between the lines of timbers bent and weary as this old barn declines. So it's my imagination that gets to fill in the detail of the history in the rafters and the old stories behind each nail.